Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome back to Watchbox and Collector's Guide. There's a saying in sports, the future is on hold. A year when it seems the veterans, the old guard, simply dominate proceedings. And so it has been in the watch market in 2021. Watch references on the market for years or even decades in their current form have never been hotter. We've seen it with the Patek Philippe Nautilus 5711, the AP Royal Oak Jumbo, the FP Journe Chronomet Bleu, and we've seen it with the Rolex Daytona. This is the collector's take. The story of the Rolex Daytona dates back to 1963 and a sports chronograph that Rolex dubbed the Le Mans. But Americans don't do French articles or soft ends, so the watch was immediately renamed Daytona. The timepiece began a lasting association with the sports car endurance race of the same name at the track of the same name. And through the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, I must admit it was not a popular model. All of that changed in 1988 with the arrival of the modern format Daytona. Now 40 millimeters and automatic winding, the timepiece was a sensation. In the year 2000, Rolex swapped out the Zenith movement for one of its own, and thus begins the generation that you see on today's show. Reference 116520, the first in-house caliber Daytona, ran as you see it, steel with steel bezel, between 2000 and 2015. 2016 saw the arrival of the current ceramic bezel, and that's about all the change the watch has realized in 21 years. The Rolex Daytona is slim and sultry. This is not the super case sub or sea dweller. The watch has graceful compound curves and a case that's more reminiscent of the Rolex dress models than of the sports models. It's thin. Just about every Daytona is between 12.2 and 12.5 millimeters thick, so it looks gorgeous on the wrist and a wrist of any size. It's a timepiece that is sporty with an oyster bracelet and durable in stainless steel with screw down crowns to remind you that this watch means business and it's not a dress model, but it is a rare and judicious blend of sports and dress watch all in a single reference. There have been detailed changes to the clasp through the years and since 2000, the watch has gained an uprated closure, but the easy link five millimeter adjustment has been a constant through this period. The dial of the Rolex Daytona is simple and balanced. Rolex, in good taste, has never added a date or a magnifier, so there's a lovely symmetry to the Daytona dial. The tachymeter is simple but calibrated high, and it lets you know that this watch was designed to gauge the speed of objects going very, very fast. With Rolex, the watch is the star, and that's evident in the box set, which is basic. Outer box, inner box, polishing cloth, Rolex tag. You've got a warranty card and a wallet to hold your service and user manuals. This watch is all about the watch and less about the box. The Rolex Daytona is, above all, the chronograph. For years, it had a special cachet in the Rolex catalog as the most complicated Rolex watch you can buy. To this day, it's an absolute icon, not necessarily for complexity, but for style and consistency. Again, a watch unchanged fundamentally since 1988, Rolex got the automatic Daytona right out of the gate. The chronograph system operates with a crisp column wheel, tick, and a vertical clutch simplicity, so there's no play in the system and absolute none to take up when you actuate the chronograph. The Zenith El Primero jump of the seconds hand is absolutely exercised in the current generation. Uh, this is a watch that is relatively easy to wear with just about anything. Boardroom or boardwalk, it's always at home. The 100 meter water resistance is overkill for a watch designed to be used high and dry trackside, but let's not discount that you might want to cool your heels at the beach at Daytona following the race. This is a timepiece that looks great on almost any wrist. It's a timepiece that looks great in almost any era and with almost any attire. It's hard to get it wrong, simply put, wearing a Daytona. Who should consider this watch? Traditionalists. If you like the sports complications of the 1950s and 60s, perhaps even the original 63 Daytona, this watch is for you. Are you patient? If so, batter up. With weights up to 24 months at Rolex dealers, you're gonna have to be patient to take delivery at the retail price of about $13,000. Trophy hunters. If you consider this watch the status and stature equivalent of a six-figure Patek Nautilus or FP Journe Chronomet Bleu, then the $35,000 pre-owned price almost makes sense. This is an impact watch. Race fans, start your engines. You could conceivably win this watch in 24 hours at 
Daytona, but at the end of the day, you're probably going to wait at your dealer or buy it on Chrono 24. Buy with confidence. If you're a fan of motorsports, no watch anywhere is more synonymous with speed. When you have to wait years to take delivery of a watch, it's natural to consider alternatives, and the most obvious is the 2021 Zenith Chronomaster Sport. This watch truly is the doppelganger of the Daytona, and if we're honest, it cribs quite a bit of the style from Rolex's popular chronograph. However, it's worth considering on its own terms. At 41mm with a full bracelet and stainless steel, the watch cuts the same striking figure on the wrist as the Cosmograph, and with the El Primero Caliber 3600, there's horological interest here that's not necessarily necessarily interchangeable with the Daytona. Also consider the Tudor Black Bay Chronograph. Within the house of Rolex Tudor, you have an ideal 41mm alternative. Inside is a 3-day power reserve, chronometer certified, Breitling caliber B01. Do in business with Tudor. The watch is 200 meters water resistant, durable, sporting, fun, and far more affordable and accessible than its big brother from Geneva. Do you want a Rolex? It doesn't have to be the Daytona. Quick, cover the dial of the current Yachtmaster, and you'll note that its size, its lines, its stance, its compound curves are a dead ringer for the popular chronograph. Now, the Yachtmaster isn't a chronograph, but it is a timer with a yachtsman's bezel. Again, this is a watch that gives you the full Rolex experience, the wrist stance, the status and the stature, if you crave it, but you'll be able to buy it used for about a third of the price of a steel Daytona, and the weight at your dealer, if there is one, will be short. So we're left with a quandary, a fantastic watch that takes forever to buy or winds up awfully expensive pre-owned. You need to consider the alternatives seriously. If you just want a cool watch, any of those will do. But the heart wants what the heart wants. And if the heart wants the Rolex Daytona, I recommend you stick with that. Follow the path, whether it leads through your Rolex dealer or 24 hours in Florida. The Daytona is worth the wait. And that is the collector's take.